Evening, folks. This is Mark Macrina with the Hollywood Lowdown, and that down today is movies and going to them, and it's, well, more of a downer. You know, for me as a kid, going to the movies seemed to be a thing of magic. Maybe it was just because I myself was younger and more full of hope before reality set in and crushed all my dreams. But I seem to remember a time when going to the movies was, well, a lot more rewarding than watching a movie at home. You'd sit in a seat and wait with incredible anticipation, popcorn in one hand, a slushy in the other. You'd sit through a few coming attractions, then the lights would go down, the crowds would quiet, and before you knew it, showtime. To many, going to the movies was almost magic. These days, though, not as much. And why? Certainly time is a factor, but if I have time to watch a bunch of movies, why not time to set aside to go see one with my family or some friends, should I ever get any? Where's the appeal in paying the price equivalent of my electric bill for a couple of bags of popcorn, candy, and or soda? And of course, these days, the modern comforts of home have given nearly everyone the ability to turn their living room into a home theater. Large screen TVs, enhanced sound systems, digital picture, and of course, the lack of people. Yes, the idea of trying to sit through a movie without those annoying cretins who turn their phones on or text the parents that bring in the screaming children way too young, and of course, the morons that decide to rummage through their candy bags during the most quiet, dramatic, or silently intense parts of the movies, killing the whole moment. Yet the theater strive to keep its audience. All screens now enhanced in the latest of screen and sound technology, amping up your audio and visual experience. In many theaters, regular movie seats are now comfy, cushiony recliners, enhancing comfort with head and footrests. All well and good, unless the movie's really boring and more people are falling asleep. Ergo, you paid the same amount of money as one of my car payments, basically to take a two-hour nap. Some theaters offer Lux Level, a sort of first class for movie going for people over 21 who, with like on an airplane, at the push of a button on their seat, can have someone bring them a meal or a beer or a snack or a beer or just some side orders or a beer. And now the latest in movie theaters, middle finger to streaming sites, monthly movie passes, which present a new idea which will allow people to see any and all movies for $10 a month. As for me personally, you will never truly be able to replace a good movie experience like the one you get at a theater. There's something communal about it, and with the right movie and the right crowd, a collective enjoyment does happen and helps with both watching the movie and remembering the movie. Like the first time we all marveled at Jurassic Park, gasped at Darth Vader, screamed during Psycho, and laughed ourselves silly during Ghostbusters, and hung our heads in shame after paying for Batman and Robin. Perhaps the reason the theaters aren't what they once were is because audiences aren't what they once were. So maybe it's not all the cost of a ticket or soda, or the rise in stream sites and on demand, or our lack of time, or lack of truly innovative movies being shown on screen. Maybe we've just become spoiled. Until next time, this is Mark Macrina saying, see you at the movies. Well, some of you, anyway. <laughs>